Welcome back to our ongoing Office 365 series. Last we were doing um, SharePoint, so we're gonna go back into SharePoint. Uh, that should be right there. And if you want, you can go through this uh, training for admin. But this, or watching these videos it's a quick talk here there there it's not to the point so if you're extremely new you don't need it you uh, have to actually go and explore things play around but if you're like an IT professional you know everything <clears throat> like you've been in the industry for like at least three four years then you can watch these videos because they quickly go like one thing two thing and third thing like uh, at one point they start with uh, talking about teams then the next moment they are talking about a SharePoint and the third moment they are talking about uh, Power BI and fourth thing they are talking about Yammer so I'm, I'm serious I saw just one video this one right here you can actually see it and you have the link here you can search for Microsoft training for Microsoft and you have no idea what's going on so if you're brand new I'm not saying that you have to watch my video especially just you have to play around in the uh, Thing or go search YouTube or about other videos uh, so this tra my tra training by Microsoft is just like videos for very advanced users not for uh, new peoples let's go We're back to sh <coughs> uh, our SharePoint admin center we are in and we are in the old interface because last night we clicked on it uh, for the <coughs> from here it took us to access control right oh no here when we click here so it took, takes you to the uh, others page so there's this is like this is the new admin and then there was a previous one <clears throat> let's get starting on the settings today so setting settings and uh, control which feature are available to your users we're gonna see with what's in notification very simple one do you want allow notification yes or no so it's about the share, SharePoint content notification on their mobile devices. Very easy. Do you want them to be have push notifications on their mobile or not? The other one is to site storage limits. So when we are at seeing the site, one site had 1.24 terabyte. So over here, you can either set that the storage uh, site the can use maximum of 25 terabyte, and that's a whopping amount of storage or you can do manual and once you click manual you are not specifying here you are specifying everything in there uh, when you create that site so it's uh if it's automatic so the setting is there for def by default that they can use up to 25 if not then you have to actually go and uh, i can actually leave it here so if we create a site we have the option over there default admin experience is the one that do you want this interface or the one that when i started the video so if you default admin experience for all admins so whoever logs in they will not be greeted with the old one they will automatically see this one i'm going to keep it off because um i believe um there is more option like it's a transition phase and they are still switching you back and forth so I don't want to turn it on by on and there is nothing and you know <clears throat> even though nobody's gonna use it but for the time being I can turn or save it or but I want to keep it the other way so if I log in I don't miss anything site creation is <clears throat> Uh, create team sites under so all of the sites they will be under this address ime.sharepoint.com slash site and I actually very interestingly see a guy saw actually a website that was shared on this one I have no idea he has like um, uh, shared it on his home server or it's on here it was on sharepoint.com with his username here so he maybe pointing the uh, web address there or he's hosting the, his own web pages all that but it was cool so you uh, all of your site will be under here 
so basically it sites and then your site name when when the uh, in the the other video when I showed you how to create sites you do it your URL will be here default time zone mine is I'm in the extra East Coast so it's gonna be this one let's use it create new site do you want your users to create new sites and everything will be under under here <clears throat> um, do you want it or not let's leave it on yeah why not default storage limit for new site again it's 25 terabytes so each site get 25 terabyte so if uh, and if you count the space provided and then you see how much uh, they are charging $50 a user it's really in the end I think office 365 is worth it and a lot more companies will switch once they weigh the benefits and costs so since we are not changing anything we could we could do like teams over here like uh, do you want it uh, sites to sh make their uh, do you want teams to make their sites under sites or teams so let's get out of here there. like I've been noticing that Microsoft is in the process of <coughs> migrating from old interface to the new one uh, you see I just noticed that there's a can't find the setting you're looking for it means there are a lot more settings than just uh, these so go to the classic setting page and let's see how much is there oh look at this the slide bar scroll bar Wow okay so you see <laughs> there's a lot more than this uh, than in the previous page and this is the user interface I was talking about so I'm keeping this one so if I log in I want to have more information so I can actually learn everything it says show or hide app titles show or hide app title add hide app titles in the app launcher on the office 365 portal so app launcher is portal is this basically this is your portal so app launcher is this like all apps so basically if I click on I portal.office.com <coughs> I go to this page so whenever they say portal it's your <coughs> login page that is office.com as well so I'm thinking that those apps will appear here uh, SharePoint <coughs> if I see show and show and I save it let's save it and see what happens <coughs> So let's go back there back there I don't see SharePoint and this let's refresh it nope maybe I have to log oh okay it's saying it could be for since I'm the admin let me log in with the user account again we go to a portal <coughs> right there uh, no yammer I'm jumping SharePoint and where's the other one what's the other one was <coughs> OneDrive it, do you, right there OneDrive so let me hide them it could take like uh, on some of the settings I saw the warning especially with SharePoint that is, some could take 15 minutes some could take uh, 24 hours but that they were mostly related to the website settings so let's see if OneDrive and SharePoint disappears from the screen SharePoint is there and OneDrive is there so it could be that latency issue that I talk but this basically should tells am I right or not hi the one SharePoint apps titles office portal yes this is the FS portal portal dot office right All right, so it was exactly what I was thinking. It is two minutes to read. It was updated 27th of December, so this is it. Real effects, site collection, <coughs> storage management. 
So do you want this site collection storage management to be automatic or manual? <coughs> So this is about the, how much the site can use the storage thing. So it's just storage management. Do you want it to be automatic set to manual? <coughs> Sorry about that. So um, it could be like um, I um, since uh, OneDrive was mentioned alongside SharePoint, and I always had the idea that SharePoint is for the website, and I didn't know that you could share files on them as well. Uh, I that. Um, and I'm saying big, bigger files. I know for like little files, a uh, Word, Excel documents, and pictures. Yeah, but not the other one. Like other one is uh, how, for OneDrive is for. So when OneDrive was like common and we were do doing the slider thing, I read about the um, uh, OneDrive and I thought that it could be one terabyte. No, basically it's one terabyte, then five terabyte, then twenty-five terabyte, or unlimited. So after this SharePoint I'm gonna uh, dive into OneDrive uh, I saw it uh, over here somewhere <coughs> so let's see it's uh, all at the center OneDrive so I'm gonna go there next after I'm done with the SharePoint so this is the uh, this is the thing the other setting we saw in the the other page the normal page that how much you want it it has to more uh, storage less storage or you want to manually um, um, manage it OneDrive for business oh OneDrive is right here the new experience so basically again they have to change the uh, OneDrive uh, interface as well so what kind of ex uh, uh, interface you want to present to your user classic or new admin center experience it was in the um, other interface as well uh, we want the simple or advanced I'm going with the advanced if I click simple I think some of the options will be let's see what happens I think some of the options will be gone I hope I know how to get them back or I figured out <coughs> so it's still saving it's still going here and I'm gonna go with the advanced back mm, so next we have admin center experience we want it to be advanced So advanced is more like you get uh, get to see all the options. Delve powered by Office Graph feature. So. <laughs> I think Delve is social networking for the files. I'm just making this thing up based on these four bullet points. So on social networking, you have like uh, they show you other groups or channels based on your interest. This saying is that this feature will show you other people's documents if they are on they're working on you with the same thing and all that or profile and pages document like if they have shared something you can see those documents so I can click on learn more about Delve ah see uh, because the, now it's like editing a document at the same time uh, by multiple users so it's like one could be working on this paragraph, the other one on this, and third one is here. I <coughs> so this is how like uh, you can see all those documents and uh, everything. So if you <coughs> disable it, then they will not be able to see all those documents that others are working and they are on their in your team. Ex 
enterprise social collaboration is yammer.com or short sharep sharepoint newsfeed <clears throat> they say you can make yammer primary social experience for everyone in your organization or <clears throat> service will replace newsfeed and change of global navigation uh, yes so it can take up to 30 minutes like if you change it now you're not gonna see it in real time it can take up to 30 minutes <clears throat> Yammer is not a covered service under 365 Trust Center at this time. So, so if you do it, Yammer will have access to, to your company's user and group information and everything. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not doing Yammer. Streaming video service. I didn't know they had one. Control if you do the store and stream from Azure Media Service. This is the first time I'm hearing about Azure Media Service. I knew. I knew e Azure is like cloud. Don't confuse it with just Active Directory. It's a whole cloud platform where you can build uh, or host or <coughs> store or get uh, processing power. So it's SaaS software as a service, PaaS platform as a service, and there is another one, Architect or no. Uh, something like that so there's another thing so cloud is a lot bigger than just active directory azure active directory so don't confuse it's uh, huge so maybe they are they have a like a media service so streaming is normally associated with youtube hulu or netflix enables enable streaming video through azure media service and enable the me video player do you want to enable the streaming service on your sites or in your organization so people enjoy <laughs> the stream rather than working <laughs> i'm just kidding it's like uh, everything is in personal thing like on their website and all that personal blogs um, enable personal blogs do you want people to have blogs in those websites sharepoint website we are strictly talking about just sharepoint site pages do you want c site pages so site pages is like a web pages as well so it's just a different name so do you want them to have uh, uh, create pages or not these are all grayed out and so we cannot change anything so since it's grayed out basically they they do not want you to create the old version website like if there was an older version of SharePoint from now on that uh, can stay be up there you don't have to go and remove changing or edit it or create it once from the scratch but from now on you are only allowed to create a new version sites only IRM is a right management so internet right uh, information it should be information right management because normally with the videos or music industry they have a DRM digital right media so they put in the CDs and you know uh, so when you try to copy or you do try to like burn them they don't work because the because of that piece of software that they do that it was very common but normally I don't think anybody uses CDs anymore that was way back I'm talking about like 15 years ago when and they had DRM on CDs <clears throat> and everybody has no stream uh, like Spotify or you know uh, these over the internet or you can download it on your uh, cell phones so you now you don't have it on CD you have it on the actual media the file on uh, the DRM site creation display the creation site command one drive so you can so do you want your users to create a site it's basically making it easier they see the link and hey let's go create a site click boom they are now creating a site so you can either it says command it will be just a link there and they're saying command because obviously it's gonna go into the back end once they click it it's gonna execute the command in the back end and create a uh, tell SharePoint to create this user site this one is group connected team site or communication site we saw the other day one is for the group the other one is communication like a bulletin board where they can post news 
a news team site or communication site a classic team sub site so what kind of fun when when they click the link what they can do they can create this one or just a classic team sub site like they have to have a team site and then they uh, can just create web sub sites sub site is site within a site or or you know sister site the second option lets user create a classic team sub site yes is then what they have to do is it should be under this team site teams is exactly the same it will be under here do you want them to a secondary contact secondary contact that, that they have to click a url so you put the url here and then they have to go to the secondary uh, uh, like what step i would say and they click on that link they are presented with that link to create it and finalizing it sub site creation do you want to hide the command again only for classic site like they cannot create sub sites in the classic site or show the sub site command for all user so they have a they have a link that they can create sub sites from so we if you remember we saw the hub sites so it's a hub is like a group of sites together connection from sites office 365 group do you want to connect sites to new office 365 groups like uh, or not it's like uh, can they connect to new groups and then they have access to it or not custom script do you want users to run custom scripts on that site this is a good or bad thing based on what the script is like uh, some scripts are good some uh, they are just scripts they are intend to do something right so do you want it or not for example when you see an ad what is it it's basically a script when you see something that uh, um, a, a video player that's even a script that's basically running a script getting the streaming and posting it on your web page so you are basically watching a video that is not hosted on your site it's just that script that's getting the media and streaming it on your web page so do you want to do let them use custom scripts some scripts can be dangerous that's why they it says prevent running custom scripts on self-service created sites so there's a link if you want you let's see what that link is let me go and read it so i clicked in so i read the caution so this is important scripts have access to everything the user has access to because they are getting their uh, rights from the user login who created it so they have their same rights as the user and they can access multiple service and you know all that so you want to be very careful sometimes scripts uh, act like a transfer of service as well for example they you are you are thinking hey it's a legit site look at this this is microsoft hosted you know or uh, official site hosted and a user is running that script malicious script to gather data from the uh, from uh, their customers and you know hoarding it for himself or for other purposes so be very careful with this one let's see what else we have preview feature so it's again it's a prevent preview feature preview is very easy it's a uh, very common if you if you ever done blogging uh, you would know or if you have done the micro I think it was there was a very old program publisher or something Microsoft um, basically when you are creating website or a blog for that matter as well anything that you're gonna post and it's gonna be a web page on the internet there is an option that you can click before uh, publishing it you can see what it will look like on the web so that's a preview so do you want the preview feature enable or disable uh, they have enabled it so rather than to go publish it see it and then say hey okay I need to make this uh, uh, I need to edit this out make these changes and while you're working on that page it's still there and in the meantime if anybody access it he's gonna see whatever was missing there or whatever that so it's a hassle for you if you don't want that then you will be FTP or whatever the way and go and delete that page and then 
you see back and forth how uh, hassle it is so a preview is just give them one click uh, they exit it out that place is cl uh, closed nobody has can see before you actually publish it last one uh, no last one connected services do you want uh, since all these devices on the uh, especially on the cloud they connect to different sites do you want this one to connect to other services or not like you can block SharePoint uh, workflows mobile push network uh, notification again we saw it in the back uh, in other videos <clears throat> do you want mobile notification for their one drive ODB is one drive business content like if somebody accessing it or somebody's creating links anonymous or you know sharing it uh, or how many users are accessing that thing mobile push notification for SharePoint do you want allow or not comment on the side pages do you want to have a comment box on those web pages that user can share their feedback so this is all <clears throat> for the settings I'm gonna wrap this video here and if this video has helped you please rate comment share subscribe and see you in the next one